It's 2022 and it's finally the year that you're gonna learn how to code. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how if I could go back in time 10 years, I would do it all over again with the goal of getting a job this year using no educational background, no fancy boot camps, just the free resources that you can learn with online. The first thing you're gonna need is a programming language that you want to learn. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna talk about a web developer job, specifically a front-end web developer, which means you're gonna be working on everything a user sees when they go on a website. Things like the HTML, the CSS, and the language we're going to be using, which is JavaScript. JavaScript is an amazing choice. It's one of the most versatile web languages out there. It's one of the most commonly used, commonly supported, and it's the easiest one to find help for if you are struggling with anything online. So here's how I would go about learning JavaScript. The first thing you're going to need is to be consistent with a routine. I would recommend spending, if you have it, around an hour a day, not really more than that when you're starting out because you don't want to risk burning out early. You want to start with an hour a day and maybe for the first 30 minutes you're going to watch a really good YouTube video on how to program in JavaScript. There's a great one that I would recommend by someone named Anya who is a fellow YouTuber. She makes amazing coding videos. I'm going to link it in the description but she has a nice 12 hour video talking about HTML, CSS and JavaScript. It will give you everything you need to learn. I would recommend starting with 30 minutes of her videos every single day and if you're doing an hour the next 30 minutes should be actual hands-on practice. Practice. Now there's two main sites I would recommend for hands-on practice. Number one is freecodecamp.org. They have a free interactive course on their website that you can code JavaScript on and it's absolutely one of my favorite resources online. And the second site is learnjs.org. This site is also like freecodecamp.org where in the sense that it is interactive, completely free, and I like it because the examples they show are a bit different from free code camp, so you can switch and alternate depending on what you are working on. It's important to understand when you are a beginner at programming how sort of learning coding works. A lot of people sort of expect to just follow along with something and understand it as they go, but programming is sort of like a different way of thinking. The way learning often works is you're gonna try to understand something, it's not immediately gonna click, then you're gonna sleep on it, the next day you're gonna try it again, it's still not gonna click, but then the day after you might wake up and it might just make sense. You have to sort of give yourself time and understand that it takes a bit of time for the concepts to really sink in, and just because you don't understand something at first doesn't mean you're not going to be able to understand it. You're going to want to do this for one to two months and by this point you should be somewhat comfortable with JavaScript, comfortable enough to be able to do most of the exercises on those websites as well as not have to look online or pretty much see the answers to the solutions whenever you want to try and do something. The next step we're going to do is we're going to head into the project aspect of things. Projects are amazing because not only do you get to build something cool and sort of feel the power and the rewarding nature of programming programming itself by building something, but you also get to practice your skills and use them in ways you might not have thought were possible. The simplest way to do that is starting off with something called a counter. Now a counter application is pretty much an application where someone can see a global count and then they just click a button either increment or decrement to change that count and increment it by one or decrement it by one. If you want to get a bit more advanced you can start learning something called APIs. APIs are essentially just a way for you to get external information into your application. So for example, if I type in the name of a city into your application, you can call an API that will return the current weather and temperature in that city. That's a great project because not only is it something simple to start off with, but you can also build a lot of cool things on top of it, like for example, being able to show the weather for the entire week and so on. The key to projects is you want to pick something that interests you and start really, really simple. Once you start simple, you start to build momentum. And in programming, you don't just tackle a very complex problem altogether, you break it down into parts and do it step by step by step. And you really want to get your mind in the habit of doing that. So projects are a great thing to do. And if you're still feeling a bit intimidated by it at this point, then what you can do is go online, find someone that's doing a simple tutorial like with the weather application and just copy their steps until you're familiar with the, enough with the code and you can start building onto it from there. Another great tip at this point is you're probably going to want to learn something called React.js. React.js is sort of the library that everyone uses to incorporate JavaScript with HTML and CSS to actually make websites. This is probably one of the most in-demand skills out there. I have a whole playlist on my YouTube channel showing you how to learn it from scratch and the only prerequisite is that you're comfortable with uh, JavaScript. So at this point you're probably perfect to start learning React. By far it is probably one of my favorite libraries that has ever been created in terms of programming. I highly recommend it and it's going to be here for a while. Alright at this point it's been 
four to six months since you've started. You're sort of learning React, you're comfortable with JavaScript, and you have a couple of solo projects under your belt. Now it's time to start building your portfolio, building your resume so that if an employer sees that you don't have any work experience, they have something to sort of pull on and look at when they are vetting your resume. One of the best ways to do this is through something called open source projects. All open source means is that the code base is publicly available online and anyone can sort of read it and contribute to it as long as they're contributing good code that the owners of the project are willing to pull into their code base. This is really great for a couple of reasons. Number one, it shows that you're willing to take initiative and contribute to a project that you actually find interesting. It shows that coding isn't just sort of a means to an end, it's actually something you enjoy doing and it's a hobby that you take pride in doing and holding yourself to a specific standard while you do it. Number two, it shows that you are able to look at other people's code, sort of understand what it might be missing or how it works and contribute to that showing you have a decent degree of knowledge when it comes to actually programming whatever it is you're contributing to. And number three, it shows that if your commits are actually getting accepted into that code base, you're coding at an acceptable enough standard that it's probably easy to read and easy for other developers to work with. Nobody really wants to hire a developer that isn't easy to work with or isn't easy to communicate with, no matter how good that developer might be. One popular metric that a lot of people use is if you wouldn't sit down and have a beer with someone you're hiring, you shouldn't hire them. And while we're on the topic of how to make sure your resume looks good, it's probably important for you to understand how the interview process works when it comes to applying to some of these great companies that you would probably want to work for. The first step is getting your foot into the door. A lot of times people will apply online, but it can be pretty unreliable because there's just so many people and so many bots that will shotgun apply to every single job that comes out there. One of the best ways is a referral if you possibly have a friend that works at a company. If you don't, some of the other ways include talking to recruiters on LinkedIn. And I don't just mean copy pasting the same message over and over again to every recruiter you see. I mean actually finding somebody that works at a company that you are interested in, getting to know them and sort of their journey and how they started working at the company and what it's actually like to work at that company. And then maybe afterwards asking if they have any open positions or if they'd be willing to pass your resume on. Another great method that not a lot of people do or know about is sort of signing up for websites that are specifically meant to match you with company. Things like TopTile.com, Gun.io, TripleByte, and Hired.com. I will leave the link to all of those in the description. But let's say at this point you finally get to talk to a recruiter. What they're going to do is they will have a probably 10 minute phone call with you just to make sure you are who you say you are and nothing seems, you know, out of the ordinary or sketchy. At that point, they'll probably send you an online programming test. Now it's important to note that for almost all of these good companies you would want to work for, this online programming test is not going to be related to anything that you have learned in the past. It's sort of weird, but most online tests and even phone interviews will be related to something called data structures and algorithms. Data structures and algorithms is something that you sort of have to learn for the sake of getting a job, but on the actual job, especially in front-end development, you probably won't be using it that much, and it's not related to anything you might have learned in the past. The first thing you're going to want to do is get sort of a fundamental understanding of it. You're going to be able to do this by watching a couple YouTube videos and sort of understanding how it works. You're still going to be able to use JavaScript for all of this, so don't worry about that. It's sort of just another style of programming that isn't related to, you know, building websites or taking in user input or using an API or anything related to that. Once you start getting a fundamental understanding about how data structures and algorithms work, the de facto end all be all standard website that everyone in the industry absolutely loves and talks about and you will definitely hear about is called leetcode.org. This site is amazing. I use it to practice for all my my interviews, everyone I know used it to practice for all of their interviews. Even if you were getting a computer science degree at a university and they taught you data structures and algorithms, the majority of those people sort of don't learn too much because universities teach it in a very specific way, but when they actually have to practice for interviews, they just go on lead code and practice anyway. So it is one of the most amazing resources. Another website I recommend is interviewing.io. They have actual engineers that get paid from big companies to come and do mock interviews with applicants. Uh, the same way they would do it if they were actually interviewing you for a position at their company. I will leave a link to that in the description below as well. I use that a ton to practice from my interviews and it's really different from when you're just sitting there on leak code coding on your own to when you actually have someone on the other end of the call asking you and sort of guiding you through these questions. Um, it really creates an interview like process and if you are trying to get a job as a consultant which is a slightly different process that I talk about in my other video where I compared freelancing to actually getting a full-time job you probably won't need data structures and algorithms, especially if you're going through a site like Upwork.com where a lot of people just have a website and they want you to fix a certain part of it or build out a new functionality of it. At this point, it's
it's probably been six to 12 months since you've started your programming journey. A lot of people take either shorter or longer, and that just depends on how dedicated they were and consistent they were, as well as how much experience they might've had with programming going into this entire process. So don't feel bad or too confident if you got there faster or slower than this timeline. It's really just sort of a big bucket and people can fall into different realms. For example, for me, it probably took a bit longer than that before I started really doing well on interviews myself and getting job offers. What you're gonna wanna do at this point is just start applying as much as you can, making sure that you stay brushed up on front-end technologies like React and working on side projects, as well as continuously practicing leak code questions and getting better and better and better. And you're probably gonna also wanna watch a video on how to negotiate your salary because with almost every job offer, there is going to be the option to negotiate. And a lot of the times, if you just accept a job offer the first time you get it, you're probably gonna be missing out on some really good money. Wow, that was a lot to take in. If you feel intimidated, don't worry. A lot of this will make more sense as you go on your journey. I'd recommend just bookmarking this video and going to the specific timestamps we have in the description. But right now, I'm gonna talk about some frequently asked questions that I see on other videos and that I get a lot that sort of discourage people to start programming. The first one is going to be whether or not you have to be some sort of mathematical genius or even just a genius in general to do programming. The answer is absolutely no. You do not need to be a genius to learn how to code and you don't even need to know that much mathematics to learn how to code. When you're doing front-end development, you use math almost never and the only time you're gonna need to learn math is for data structure and algorithms problems where you're gonna need to know things like what a prime number is or how a factorial works or how exponentials and logarithmic operators work. And even that is something that you can pretty much just learn from watching a couple of YouTube videos. It doesn't require some in-depth background in calculus or anything like that to just get to the point where you are a decent programmer that can contribute positively to an organization or a company. The next question I get is how much you can expect to make at your first job as a software developer. And that's gonna depend on a lot of different factors. Number one, biggest factor is the company you are applying to. Number two is where they are based. Number three is where you are based. And number four, what you're applying for. A lot of the times, for example, if you were to just get a software developer job in Toronto, I believe the average salary is around $78,000 a year. And on top of that, a lot of tech companies will give you something called stock options, where pretty much they allocate, for example, $40,000 of their stock to you and it vests or they give it to you over the course of four years of your lifetime at that company. You'll also get things like a sign-on bonus or a relocation bonus. And also you'll probably get a bonus at the end of the year or if you get promoted. That's a pretty good indicator. If you're doing contract jobs online, it can be a bit more different. For example, you might start off at an hourly rate of like $20 an hour until you have a couple of projects under your belt and then you can slowly ramp up your rate from there. If you are getting a job at a company in Silicon Valley, for example, you can expect the starting compensation in terms of salary to be around $100,000 a year. And then on top of that, you can get anywhere to up to another $100,000 in terms of sign-on bonus or uh, relocation or stock vesting or actual just bonuses throughout the year. The total comp is usually around 150K in total for one of those companies. Lastly, I wanna clear up this misconception that if you were to get a job, you have to automatically know every single thing about the job, which is completely untrue. In fact, a lot of the times, companies will interview you in data structures and algorithms because they don't expect you to know the unique or niche technology they are actually using for their company. The sort of assumption is if you are good enough to understand the fundamentals of programming with things like data structures and algorithms, you should be okay to learn whatever it is you have to learn on the job. And I can confidently say that over 80% of the jobs that I have ever worked at and companies I've ever worked at, everything I had to actually do for the job itself, I did not know going in. And I was able to just learn as I went and learn from the teams uh, that I was on. Most of the times, especially for bigger tech companies, the teams you're going to work on are going to be very, very helpful. People are gonna be very willing to help you. And if you aren't sure if the company you are applying for is like that, I highly recommend checking out a website called glassdoor.com. Searching your company up on glassdoor.com will show you how much uh, people sort of like the company. They'll show you people's opinion. Um, I <laughs> know for personal experience, Experience that a lot of people I know have avoided working at some not so great companies because they first looked at them on Glassdoor and saw that things were pretty terrible there. But Glassdoor.com is in my opinion an amazing way to find out whether or not the company you're working for is going to be a pleasant experience or a pretty grueling hardworking one. And you can also find a lot of the questions that the companies will ask you on the actual interview on Glassdoor.com as well. If you found value make sure you leave a comment. If I missed anything I will try to respond to every single comment on this video and it helps so much with the YouTube algorithm 
algorithm and make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna have content like this coming out a lot more in the future and I'll see you guys in the next video.